Come on in guys, welcome to Idled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're taking a Survivor history lesson. Throughout Survivor history, the metagame has evolved from literally not understanding what an alliance is, to front side triple cross your trust cluster voting block with your hidden immunity idol and steal a vote right before final four fire making on the edge of extinction. Now that just doesn't happen overnight. As Survivor has gone on, legendary players have advanced the strategy in really meaningful ways. Richard Hatch created alliances. Sari invented the 3 2 1 vote. Russell found idols without any clues. But we're not here to talk about legendary players making amazing moves. We're here to talk about significant pieces of the Survivor metagame that were invented by completely random people. Now, as a great author and linguist once wrote, even the smallest person can change the course of the future. And while Survivor wasn't on while J.R.R. Tolkien was alive, I like to think he would have been a big fan and probably would have written that quote about Survivor, not Hobbits. So let's dig into seriously common Survivor strategies that were invented by the most random people imaginable. The number five game-changing rando is Stacy Kimball from Survivor Fiji. Let me set the stage. Stacy is a player comfortably in the majority alliance by the time we hit the Fiji merge. She seems generally more interested in laying out on the beach and arguing with people than actually playing Survivor. Well, I don't know how to freaking use it, so if someone can you tell me- You have to boil water, you put the coffee in the bottom, you pour the boiling water on top and you let it sit for about three minutes and then you press it down and then you have coffee. Super fast. But Stacy and the rest of her alliance have a problem. There's a minority of three, Alex, Mookie, and Edgardo, and either Alex or Mookie has an immunity idol, but they're not really sure which one. So the biggest brains in Fiji, including Earl and Yao Man, meet up to discuss what to do about this problem. Who do they vote for? How do they avoid getting idled out? And then out of nowhere, Stacy pitches the then unheard of idea of voting out the person least likely to have the immunity idol. In this case, Edgardo. This strategy of voting for the least threatening person to avoid idol shenanigans embedded itself in the survivor metagame instantly and is common majority alliance strategy now when playing around idols. And it's all thanks to Stacy Kimball. However, even better than Stacy's game-changing strategy might just be Edgardo's face when he realizes he's catching the votes. At number four, we've got the survivor stump speech courtesy of survivor Samoa's Eric Cardona. At the final tribal council, jurors get their chance to ask questions or open a dialogue with the finalists. Sometimes they ask, what was your biggest move of the game? Sometimes they ask, how could you vote me out? Sometimes things get weird. You have labeled yourself as a flirt. You're probably the most masterful person in the history of Survivor to play the flirt card, which is great. My question to you is, how does that resonate for you in the bedroom? But in Survivor Samoa, Eric Cardona invented a way to essentially make one last game move from the jury bench. His impassioned plea for Natalie White to win and for Russell to lose is a defining moment of that season, a full-throated defense of Natalie's under-the-radar game, and proof that bigger isn't always better. And while it didn't tip the scales in Natalie's favor, she was already going to win, it sure did look like it on TV. Maybe. Just maybe in an environment filled with arrogance, delusional entitlement. Maybe the person who thinks that she's least deserving is probably the most. In later seasons, survivor jurors with chips on their shoulders would make the same impassioned pleas to almost immediately diminishing returns. Most notably, David Murphy attempted a version of this speech in defense of Boston Rob's Redemption Island game imploring the jurors to vote for his dominant, incredible game over, uh, Philip and Natalie. As if anyone would vote for either of these two over Boston freaking Rob. Well, except Ralph. Spencer Bledsoe also did this type of plea for Tony over Wu, which again, like, why? It happens almost every season now, although the new tribal format seems to have tempered the grandstanding a little bit. Still, we can't forget Eric Cardona, who started this whole thing all the way back in season 19. At number three, we have a person who is pulling the strings of survivor strategy without ever having set foot on the island. Yes, internationally renowned Australian pop star Sia. 
Sia, the original Masked Singer, is apparently a huge Survivor fan. She's also extremely wealthy and also an animal rights advocate. So in Survivor Co Wrong, Sia rushed the stage at the finale to announce she was giving animal lover Ty a whopping $50,000 and donating the same amount to his animal charity of choice. And Sia's been giving money out at every finale since. She's even upped her game and has started giving multiple people money per season, some to the tune of $100,000. And it's not always simply for being an animal lover. She's given money to people who've had a rough upbringing, or had a difficult time in the game, or people who were just genuinely entertaining. And now, playing for the Sia money has entered survivor strategy thanks to Big Wendy in Edge of Extinction. You cannot tell me that a $50,000 check from Sia was not top of mind for Wendy Diaz. Wendy freed her tribe's chickens in what was a very transparent attempt in my opinion at getting the Sia bucks. And of course, Sia doesn't like being pandered to, so she gave Rick Devins, Aurora, and Joe the cash instead on that season. But as the Sia money weirdly becomes embedded into the Survivor finale, some players, like Big Wendy, are undoubtedly keeping it in the back or front of their minds on the island. At number two, we have Survivor's first ever jumping ship from an alliance, thanks to Nalia and Pascal all the way back in Survivor Marquesas. Back in the show's fourth season, we enter the Burge 6-4 on the alliance front. The larger Mara Amu alliance has John, Tammy, the General, Zoe, and then Nalia and Pascal. And the minority has Vesepia, Sean, Kathy, and Boston Rob. Boston Rob is, predictably, the merge boot, and the stage seems basically set for the majority to pick off the rest and for John or Tammy to march to the end and win. At the Coconut Chop Challenge, the majority pick off the minority three of the Sepia, Sean, and Kathy instantly. But then Nalia and Pascal notice something rather curious. The other four in their alliance are essentially working together in that challenge, tipping their hand that Nalia and Pascal are number five and number six. This doesn't go unnoticed by Vesepia, Sean, and Kathy, who start picking at that wound instantly. Nilia and Pascal ultimately jump ship at final nine, going from fifth and sixth to second and fourth, and John is voted out. This is the first time people in an alliance realized they were on the bottom, then actively worked to improve their position. Flipping on an alliance is, of course, common strategy now. But back then, this was truly revolutionary. And Nalia coming within one vote of winning showed that you wouldn't be persona non grata if you attempted this. Equal credit is due as well to Vesepia and Sean, who really worked overtime to flip Nalia and Pascal. But ultimately, it was Nalia and Pascal's jump that changed survivor strategy forever. The number one, the biggest rando to completely change survivor strategy is Cowboy in Survivor Cook Islands. Cowboy is responsible for inventing splitting the votes to flush an idol, which is literally one of the most common voting strategies in Survivor for like 25 seasons now. Majority Alliance wants to take out someone with an idol, but don't want one of their own to get idled out themselves. Cast the majority of your votes on your intended target, a minority of your votes on a secondary target, and you really can't lose. This is so common now, the show barely even bothers to explain it, and we just understand what happened when we see the vote tallies at the end of the episode. But this was, again, revolutionary in Survivor Cook Islands when Cowboy invented the strategy. Although he called it Plan Voodoo, and it came to him in a dream. For real. I had this dream I was dealing with all these supernatural people and with supernatural power. And there's a shaman lady, like this old lady. She said, well, you need three of that and three of that. And I thought, three and three. That's how you can defeat the immunity idol. You can flush it out. And I woke up and I go, whoa, plan voodoo. Cowboy intended to use this dream turn strategy against Jonathan Penner, who he believed had the immunity idol. So he confided this amazing plan to his close ally, Yule, who agreed. This is brilliant. Only the problem was, Yule was the person who had the idol, not Jonathan Penner. So as Cowboy tried to rally the rest of I2Taki to utilize Plan Voodoo against Penner, Yule, the I2-4, Penner, and Candace went ahead and blindsided Cowboy. Because Yule now realized that Cowboy was a whole lot smarter than he was letting on. Still, Cowboy's Plan Voodoo changed survivor strategy forever, even if he didn't get to implement it himself. Got nothing else for ya. 
To give me your very own Sia award, like and subscribe and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.